Hey guys, so in my previous video I asked you guys if you wanted to see a part 2 in the evolution video since there's quite a bit to address, and upon browsing through the comments it seems the majority wants it, so why not? I'll be using the same fan art for the video since it makes sense to do it that way. To anyone freaking out about me abandoning my original stick figure, don't worry, I use fan arts that are sent to me on Twitter once in a while. They're not permanent. Anyway, let's get started on this nonsense. The educational system teaches children not to think. Any student who uses logic and solid scientific evidence to question the theory of evolution is ridiculed and insulted into submission. Actually, science specifically teaches children how to think. Being able to know the scientific method in which we obtain knowledge is what science is all about. Whenever you sit in a biology, physics, or chemistry class, professors very often will tell you how we know something. For example, this specific experiment that was done and replicated to reveal new information to us. However, there are plenty of ideologies out there that do require recipients to not think for themselves, and religion is a fantastic example. Children are brainwashed by teaching them there is no absolute right or wrong. This results in children who are unable to think logically and scientifically. While well, teachers will tell children what is good and what is bad, or what should be done and what shouldn't be done, no one is telling them that this is either objective or subjective, just that there are certain rules that they should follow, like keeping your hands to yourself or not running in the hallways. Plus, how does this have anything to do with being able to think logically and scientifically? Seems like two very fucking separate matters to me. The evolutionist will claim that the presence of many individual species proves evolution. This shallow statement is devoid of reason, logic, and scientific proof. The presence of many species. Now, I wouldn't say that itself is evidence of evolution, and I don't think anyone out there really says it is. Only creationists are here to strawman biologists. The diversity of living organisms is an outcome, and we develop ideas to try to explain that outcome. Just like, for example, the presence of the sun is an observed fact, and we propose ideas to explain that fact. Evolution is the most accepted, most backed up, and most scientifically supported claim that explains the presence of many species today. Evolutionists line up pictures of similar looking species and claim they evolved one from another. The human family tree is an example of this flawed theory. You're making a lot of claims but not giving any explanations or evidence to back them up. If I wanted to watch videos like that, I'd go to Prager University. Petrified skulls and bones exist from hundreds of species of extinct monkeys and apes. Evolutionists line up the most promising choices to present a gradual progression from monkey to modern man. They simply fill in the big gaps with make-believe creatures to fit the picture. <sighs> I'm just gonna skip any part where you just pull random claims out of fucking nowhere. Jesus fucking Christ. The living fossil fish proves evolution is wrong. This fish was claimed to be a transitional form with hull-formed legs and primitive lungs, ready to transition onto land. This myth was exploded in December 1938, when a living one was caught in a fisherman's net off the eastern coast of South Africa. How very convenient for you to not tell us what this fossil or fish is called. Luckily, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's the coelacanth. It is often considered a living fossil, which means a species today that have undergone such small changes that it very similarly resembles members discovered in the fossil record. The coelacanth we found is very comparable to the coelacanth fossils we have found that is dated back to about 66 million years ago. How is this possible? The best explanation we have is that there was a lack of evolutionary pressure to encourage any genetic change. That doesn't mean natural selection didn't happen, just that the environment favors those that did not undergo any significant genetic alteration. Alterations. At one point, we did believe that it is a transitional indicator of fish evolving into land animals, and to some degree that is true. We now know that the coelacanth simply speciated from the lungfish about 360 million years ago, and the lungfish then evolved into terrestrial animals. This is what science is all about. We admit any false knowledge and correct them to best fit new information we obtain. The theory of evolution claims that organic life was created from inorganic matter. That is impossible. Why is it impossible? All these claims without any sort of explanation or evidence. I'm just gonna... Excuse me for a bit, I need to watch something cute to calm down. Ah, <sighs> that's better. Just look at those cute little squishable kittens, I just wanna wash them up! The DNA repair process proves that evolution is wrong. It's a fact that any attempt by the DNA to change is stopped and reversed. 
Well, yeah, it's true we have these proofreading enzymes in place that significantly reduces the chances of mutation. But like you say later in the video, it's not 100% fail-proof. Mutations will still bypass this checkpoint system. Mutations or DNA replication errors are the result of DNA that is replicated with damage that passes on to the offspring. Well, mutations aren't only those. Although they are passed on to offspring if they specifically occur in sperm or egg cells, mutations happen for every cell. Sorry, I'm just nitpicking at this point. Carry on. Mutations are very rare because of DNA checking and repair. However, one in every 10 million duplications of a DNA molecule can result in a mutation. The mutation changes are random, unpredictable errors that cause crippling diseases, loss of function and the destruction of the host person or animal. While it's true that most of the mutations that have an effect on phenotype typically are loss of function and detrimental, that doesn't mean you can't have any beneficial ones. The ability to digest lactose, for example, wasn't present in Homo sapiens in the past, but is now a favorite gene that has passed on to the majority of the population. The real world is littered with these examples. Let me just give you a few more. There's a mutation on the 32nd position of the T helper cell membrane protein called CCR5 delta 32 that can allow individuals to be resistant to the HIV virus. A heterozygous sickle cell individual is resistant to malaria. Insects develop pesticide resistance. Some people have point mutations that lead to better blood cholesterol elimination. The list goes on. Mutations destroy the species. They do not improve the species. Mutations never lead to a new species as falsely claimed by evolutionists. Thank you so much for telling me that. The fact that you provided no evidence or explanation really convinced me there. The second law of thermodynamics proves that organization cannot flow from chaos. Complex life organisms cannot rearrange themselves into an organism of a higher form. This is scientifically backwards according to the second law of thermodynamics, which has never been proven wrong. This scientific law actually refutes and contradicts the theory of evolution in its entirety. Okay, so I've actually made a video on this topic before, but I'll just give a short summary here. The second law of thermodynamics describes entropy. In an isolated system, entropy will always increase over time. Earth itself isn't even an isolated system, since it receives energy from the sun. However, that isn't a proper argument in defense of evolution, and here's why. The second law implies that when you have energy perform work on an object, it will never have 100% efficiency. So, energy is always lost. That's why your phone charger heats up, because not 100% of the power is entering your phone, and a lot of it is lost as heat. Of course, this is only one variation of this law. Other variations include the impossibility for heat to flow from a cold object to a hotter one without the addition of work, and the increase of unavailable energy as a system changes. But overall, the second law really has little to do with the concept of evolution, because evolution deals with the organisms that utilize energy, not the energy itself. The law gives no restrictions on how the structure or the complexity of the media can change, just that the entropy must increase as energy is transferred from one form to another. The way creationists use entropy and redefine it as a vague term like disorder to trick people is what really grinds my gears, because it shows that they fundamentally don't understand this law of physics. Anyway, I didn't explain it as well as I could have, since this is a pretty big concept that can't really be summarized in a few minutes. I made a video before where I touched on it in more detail. I'll leave a link down below to that video, if I remember that is, and it's an old video so please give it some slack. There is no scientific evidence that a species can change the number of chromosomes within the DNA. Each species is locked into its chromosome count that cannot be changed. Not true. I mean, are you saying that people with Down syndrome don't exist? Because they seem to have an extra chromosome. And plus, new chromosomes form all the time. Dislocation can easily cause an extra chromosome to appear from a broken part of another chromosome. I mean, just the act of meiosis 2 itself easily doubles the number of chromosomes in the two daughter cells combined. Non-disjunction, or an error in this division, can cause certain sex cells to have more or less in terms of the chromosome number. Now you are simply just ignorant on this matter. If an animal developed an extra chromosome or lost a chromosome because of some deformity, it could not successfully mate. The defect could not be passed along to the next generation. No, there's a possibility of infertility of the offspring, but it's not guaranteed. And when these defective individuals do mate with healthy ones, this chromosome variation could spread into the population, especially if it cycles around and allows two individuals who both have the defective chromosome count to mate, although the chances can be quite low. According to the cell machinery, if the chromosome number is increased or decreased, but the essential genes are still present, there's no real reason why this system would fail. You can imagine the chromosomes as a binder that keeps all your papers. It's the papers that are important, not the binder. Anyway, thankfully, 
fucking god, that's the end of that video. I almost regret making a part 2. This video turned out to be pretty boring. I mean, my video here. I'm a narcissist. I usually fucking worship my own videos. So when I say this video is boring, it must be pretty boring. And I'll stop ranting now. I'm hoping that next week I'll be able to read and respond to your comments. It'll be a fun video. Bye.